Like these are the simplest. This is the thing that everybody, when you become a Christian, these are the things, these were the foundations that were, these were the foundation that were laid. This is the foundation that was laid for you as a new convert. And they said, we can't, we can't stay at the foundation forever. Hear me and hear me very well. There is a move, and that move is the move that tries to totalize our Christian experience into one of the principles of the doctrine of our faith. And it is a principle of faith toward God. Now, faith toward God is being made into a system because the word faith is a word that has such elasticity in Christian thinking. Okay? So, have faith in God as belief. Or somebody can say, since I came to the faith. You see that I've used the word faith in two very different ways. There is a sense in which faith refers to the system of grace. You are saved by grace through faith. That the New Testament is a testament that is predicated principally on faith. If you want to draw that distinction. So that the distinction between the law and grace is also a distinction that is often drawn between works and faith. You cannot be saved by works, but you are saved by faith. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. There is a way that this is smuggled in to mean that because the entirety of the Christian faith can be branded, can be called by the word faith, there is now word of faith movement that is a form of teaching and there is a variant of it that deals with a very different emphasis and that variant is faith toward God and the implications of faith toward God. The, that system is called the system of grace. When the Bible says you are saved by grace through faith, it is a gift of God, not a works less any man should boast. So that some persons have decided to totalize the entirety of the gospel into what you may call grace teaching or faith teaching. This thing that I'm talking about in terms of faith toward God is generally what people call grace teaching. And that is what undergirds hyper grace, what we call hyper grace teaching. One of the problems of the hyper grace, apart from all the other things that are wrong doctrinally with their teaching, is the fact that they seek to totalize the entirety of Christianity to the teaching of what they call new creation realities. Faith towards God. Remember, however, that faith toward God, first and foremost, is the other side of the coin that might be called. That the other side is called what? Repentance. From what? From dead works. Repentance from dead work precedes faith toward God on the list. When you totalize the entire message into faith towards God, the hearing of faith, not the works of the law. There are a lot of subtle dangers with that. And that's why we are doing this series. Huh? There are a lot of subtle dangers with that. Number one is to say that this subject matter actually belongs in the things that are foundation that we are supposed to live once it's been established so that we can move on. Are you there? So that we can move on to maturity. Then you build an entire ministry around it. Let's assume that that is okay. Assuming that that's the only thing that you know how to teach. It's not a problem to be a nursery school teacher. The problem is that you are insisting that nobody should graduate from nursery school. Are you there? So, there is a way that this thing works. The way this thing works is that there is a journey we are supposed to be making. And everything, the entire items on this list, six of them, they are part of what we learn at one level. At the primary level, at the elementary level, the infantile level, that is milk. And the Bible does not say we must stop there. It says we should move on. There is strong meat that we should move on to. The trouble is for the hyper grace camp, all right, the idea is they have turned where to start into where to camp. That is with regards to what is even true in what they say. Because many of the things they say are not even accurate. But with regards to the one that is even accurate, the trouble still is that they want you to camp where you were supposed to start. Faith toward God is part of the elementary. That's where we start. 
not where we come. So if that's the only message that you have, if the only message you have is soteriology, is how you have been saved and all the things that have happened to you being virtue of being saved and your new creation realities, a point will come so long as it's the same people you are teaching. A point will come, you will run out of data. By that I mean you run out of content. And in order not to become monotonous, you will be forced to begin to invent. That's the problem with people like Damina. Some of you are already angry. Sorry. We are doing this series for a purpose. Somewhere, if not before, most likely before, before the next MIS of next year, by the mercies of God, I will, I will teach you how to do doctrinal engagement. And the status of scripture when it has to do with naming names. There's a biblical thing for it. And by now, I also know that, I also hope by now that you know that in these matters, it's not the most important card, is not age. I have been preaching the message of the cross for more than 20 years. So in that account, Damina is a newcomer. I hope you know. It, assuming he's even preaching the right thing, he's still a newcomer. He was doing Pentecostal voodoo for many, many, many years by his own admission. As at the time he was doing that thing, we were already preaching this same message of the cross. He's a recent convert to this thing that he's claiming he's doing. And if I don't know what I'm saying, I will be a fool. You, you can go and look for my message from 1998, if you can find them. It is the same thing. So some of us have been playing in the terrain long enough to have a certain level of perspective that newcomers don't have. And I'm saying, therefore, even if what Damina is now saying, assuming is even true, assuming is real, and it's not real, and it's not correct, if you take, uh, uh, if you take 10 liters of pure water, huh? pure water, and then you add 100 mil of sniper, is that majority water, minority poison? Is that what it is? the entire thing becomes poison. So even if what you are teaching in large part, even if it is true, and then you have these venomous strands that you use to corrupt the entire thing, you should be avoided like a plague. And like I'm saying to you, we have been doing this thing for over 20 years. Yes, if you have practiced something and you have handled something for 26 years, you should have something to say about it. It will be unjust, it will be a lie. For me to say that I don't know what I know. So he might be older than me. But with this message, he's a newcomer. And he left one bush and entered another bush on the other side. So there are different issues I'm dealing with here. Number one is that we should not camp where we should start. There's a difference between a camping place and a starting place. Don't camp where you should start. It never ends well. When you look at the, the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for therein, therein, therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How is it revealed? It is revealed from faith to faith. It's important that faith occurs twice here. That the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in the gospel is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. The trouble with even the, the doctrine, the teachings of hyper grace that is correct, the trouble with it is that it is only the first faith in that equation. It negates the second one. Meanwhile, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. Because the reason why it is from faith to faith is because apart from the gospel being the power of God unto salvation, unto saving, saving, apart from it being the power of God unto salvation, the, in the same gospel, that is where the power of God unto living is. For daring, put this scripture back please for me on the script. On, on, on the screen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. How? From faith to faith. Why is it from faith to faith? Because as the scripture have said, the what? The righteous, the just. That's the word for righteous. It's the same word. The righteous. The righteous. The righteous shall not just be, but they shall what? Live. 
live how by faith how did they become righteous by faith how do people that have become righteous by faith how do they live by faith so there is faith for living there is faith for being that's why you go from faith to faith the saving faith you have heard about grace to grace grace for grace the law was given by Moses but grace came through Jesus Christ the Bible says and of his fullness in verse 16 have all we received and grace for grace we receive grace will you not say for what the answer now becomes grace that there is grace you need to receive so that you can receive grace. The trouble with the hyper grace thing is that it stops at the first grace and it forgets that you receive that grace so that you can receive grace. That the goal, the purpose huh, for which you receive grace includes receiving grace because the grace of God that brings salvation, saving. Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. And the next verse 12 says, teaching us, not all. Teaching us, not all. The grace that brings salvation appears to all men. But the grace that teaches does not teach all men. It is only those that have received saving grace that will enjoy teaching grace. That's why even though saving grace appears to everybody, teaching grace does not appear to everybody. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. He didn't say teaching all. He says teaching us. That us is the subset of all that said yes when grace appeared. So that the moment you have embraced saving grace, you will not realize that there's another department, there's another genre, there's another manifestation, if I may use the word, of grace that is teaching. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world.